Good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson we'll be jumping into a whole new topic. So for this topic we'll be dealing with one of the biggest theorems in our maths curriculum which will be the theorem of Pythagoras. Okay, so let's see what the theorem of Pythagoras is. It says that this is the rule basically, the theorem states the square on the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. So this is a, a new term for us, right? Um, let me just underline, underline that for you. The hypotenuse, okay? Terrible line. Let me just fix that. So, we're dealing with the hypotenuse. So, they're saying the square on the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle, right? We can see here we have a right angle. So, clearly this is a right angle triangle. So, the square on the hypotenuse. So, what is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is the longest side of your triangle okay and it is also opposite the right angle so basically what i'm saying is this line over here is your hypotenuse as you can see it is opposite your right angle and it is also the longest side on your triangle okay so this line ac that is our hypotenuse so the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the opposite other two sides okay so these are the other two sides over here terrible arrow but bear with me so the sum of the squares of these two sides over here right try and fix that okay so that's basically the theorem how we'd write it out okay this is the part that i want you guys to pay real close attention to um let's grab this color over here we'll go with red so Let's write it out as we say it. The square on the hypotenuse. So we know the hypotenuse is line AC. So we say AC squared because they say the square on the hypotenuse, okay? Or of the hypotenuse. Is equal to the sum. So we know with sum it's addition. So we'll put in the addition sign. Of the squares of the other two sides. So the other two sides being AB and BC. So we'll say AB squared plus BC squared. So there we've written out the rule. This is the theorem of Pythagoras, okay? So the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Cool? So that's the theorem written out in full. So it says here the hypotenuse is the side opposite the 90 degree angle, obviously, which we've already identified over there. So now that we sort of have a basic understanding of the theorem of Pythagoras, let's move over to some examples, shall we? So, let's look at this example that we have here, the first example over here, which says we have a triangle A, B, C, right? And let's first try and identify our hypotenuse, okay? So, let's identify our, sorry, if I identify our hypotenuse, it will be this line A, C, cool? So, we're going to write out the theorem, right? What did the theorem say? The square of the hypotenuse, so that is AC squared, of a right angle triangle is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. Okay, so that's AB squared once again, plus BC squared. So that's our theorem written out over there, okay? Now what we're going to do is substitute in the values that we know, so we can find out the unknown. The unknown, which is AC, so that will stay AC squared. Now we say AB squared, so we can find out which is line AB, which is from year to year. So that's 12 squared plus BC, which is 5, which will give me 5 squared, okay? So now we're going to work it out. So we say AC squared. So now we're going to square these numbers over here, right? So 12 squared is going to give me 144 plus 5 squared, which gives me? 25. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work that out. So this will still stay AC squared and we'll get 144 plus 25 which gives me 169. Now what we left to do is find out the size of AC but we need to get AC by itself. Okay. So we're going to say the square root of AC squared to get rid of that square. And so what you do to the one side, you do to the other side as well. So they will square the 169. So we get AC is equal to 13. You can say 13 units if you want to. 
that's fine because as you can see they don't give us a unit so we can just say 13 units and with that after working out that AC is equal to 13 units we know that the side AC is represented by this X they want us to solve for X so what we'll do is we'll say therefore X is equal to 13 or 13 units cool this is a very important part if we're working out for X what you can do either is substitute in the X here in this step over here but if you don't then you carry on with AC or this name of the side at the end you have to say therefore X equal to 13 if you get to this point at the end okay because they need to know what X is equal to that's what they're asking you so looking at number two now first thing we're going to do identify identify our hypotenuse okay our hypotenuse is opposite the right angle and is the longer side so opposite the right angle is going to be down here right so that's going to be this line here which they already give us equal to 10 centimeters they give us this other side of here and they do not give us one of these other sides so we only used to really using Pythagoras to work out the hypotenuse but what happens if we need to work out the other side let's look at that let's firstly just write out our equation as we know it so hypotenuse LM so we're saying LM squared is equal to KL squared plus KM squared cool so that's just the sum of these other two sides but what the unknown one is is this one over here KM that's the unknown so what we need to do is make our unknown the subject of our equation so the way we're going to do that is we're going to write it as to get KM by itself we need to take KL squared over so we'll have LM squared minus KL squared is equal to KM squared right so this is our equation now with KM as the subject of our equation or it's by itself right just to make it a bit easier we'll say therefore KM squared is equal to LM squared minus KL squared I just prefer having the thing I'm trying to work out on the left hand side of my equation okay so now that we have that we can say I'm gonna put in X here already so I'll say KM squared is X squared okay because remember they said KM is equal to X so I'm just gonna say it's X squared don't forget the square then we'll say LM squared LM squared LM was equal to 10 so it's 10 squared minus 6 squared cool so now we have X squared is equal to 100 minus 36 so now we get x squared is equal to 100 minus 36 is going to give me 64 so now we have to get x by itself because it's at it's x squared we do a square root to get rid of that square so we left with x is equal to the square root of 64 it gives me 8 so i already have x equal to 8 therefore i don't have to say therefore x is equal to 8 units okay is the radius is x is equal to 8 what you can do also is just write in what you've worked out okay so that is the theorem of Pythagoras basically explained to you these are the two different examples that you will come across when dealing with Pythagoras either they've given you the other two sides and you need to work out the hypotenuse or they've given you the hypotenuse and another side and they're telling you to work out an unknown side okay which in this case you'd have to manipulate your equation to make the unknown side the subject of your equation which we got over here okay so moving on to our last part now we're looking at the converse of the theorem so the converse of the theorem says if AC squared, which would be our, our hypotenuse in any normal triangle, is equal to AB squared plus BC squared, then triangle ABC is a right angled triangle with B, angle B equal 90 degrees. Okay, so they're basically saying that if this side over here, AC, which is clearly the longest side of this triangle, is equal to the sum of the squares of these two sides then 
the angle the triangle is a right angle triangle okay so basically what you'll be doing is following the normal rule of Pythagoras cool and the next point I have says in a right angle triangle the 90 degrees is always the angle opposite the longest side so we're trying to work out if B is going to be a 90 degree angle okay so the only way we can do that is by proving that these two sides if we get their squares and add them together equal to the square of this side over here so let's work that out first let's just check what AC is equal to so what AC squared is equal to so AC squared is going to be square root of 16 squared which is going to give me 16 right so AC squared I just substitute in the square root 16 and I square it I get the total answer of 16 right so I know that when I work out the sum of these two squares they have to add up to 16 for this to be a right angle triangle cool so let's work that out this is going to be AB squared plus BC squared right is going to be equal to square root of 7 squared right that's AB plus the square root of 9 squared that is BC which we substitute in so now what's going to happen is we know that square cancel out square root so what we're left with is 7 plus 9 which gives me an answer of 16 therefore we can say we can see that they're equal so we're going to say therefore AC squared is equal to AB squared plus BC squared therefore triangle ABC is a right angled triangle okay so just to recap what we've covered today we've covered the two basic examples that we'll get of Pythagoras which I'll go back to quickly where they've given us two sides and we took out the hypotenuse so we use Pythagoras theorem as is then we've also done where they give us the hypotenuse but one of the sides is unknown so we have to manipulate our equation to make that unknown side um, the subject of the equation which we've done over here and then on top of that we've done the converse of the theorem which you can see here was trying to identify whether a triangle is a right angle triangle or not by using the theorem of Pythagoras okay so that is all it's going to be for today's recording lesson thank you very much for joining us